Yo, 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 what up everyone? It's Leo time. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. It's a beautiful day. I just gotta get a little bit of that Leo sun. I know it's not exactly the best for the camera. I got a little bit of Aquarius hair going today, but I'm down for that. A lot of Aquarius going on. We'll just, we'll just keep walking and make this thing easier. So number one, finally. Holy cow, the reason why this Leo season is bigger than usual, one, well, we've got massive amounts of eclipse energy coming in toward, towards this Leo season, but there's actually something that's more important than everything. So if you look at all the planets right now and you look at everything that's going on, especially for a while now, um, the only planet that's really been at home is Saturn, right? Saturn's been in Capricorn since December of 2017. So Saturn's kind of been the, uh, the root master of the whole universe right now. Saturn loves his control on the universe anyway. So it's been interesting to see that energy coming out a lot, right? But what's the most interesting now is now we have a power play. We've got the sun back in Leo in its natural state. So now when you're dealing with planets at home and they're dignified, and, and the sun isn't even a planet, right? It's, it's, it's the illuminary. There's a true battle right now in everyone's life of being positive or falling under this kind of control structure. And this is the ultimate like battle between love and kind of, I don't wanna say depression, but like, you know, hard growth. Like loving hard growth in our life, loving hard growth in our soul. I know that can be a very, very difficult task in life. So, you know, the good news with this son and Leo is it definitely kind of, you know, it shows up on Saturn and goes, hey, yo, listen, you're not the only game in town running the, the nest, I guess you could say. There's a lot more going on here. And I think it's going to be a little bit challenging, though, because there's a lot of battle between these two energies, Leo Capricorn. They're very opposite. They're very different. But they both love to achieve. So it might feel like craziness at the moment with life. But the truth is, is that there's massive amount of achievement at this time possible. So, you know, you gotta go get it. Yeah, you gotta go get it. It's gonna, it's not gonna be one of those like chill out, you know, I'm just relaxing through life kind of energies. It's definitely gonna be very kind of bam in your face. Oh, here's our car. Um, let me find a cool spot. It was hard to try and do this thing on the beach because it's windy and I don't know, there were a lot of people and of course yeah. people were looking at me like I was crazy. Plus, look at Leanna today. She's all dressed up. She had a fashion model thing today. Wearing what high was heels. It? What would you have? Uh, so my friend owns a fashion uh, show company called Raging Runways, and I'm going to be one of the runway models in that. So I was going to so, yeah. do stuff with this. She was, you know, doing that modeling aspect today. So then mm -hmm. I'm out here talking about astrology on the beach, and people are looking at us like, who in the hell are these fucking Joe Schmoes? <laughs> so anyway, let's start with for a lot of people just joined which is cool. So I'll just kind of reiterate what this whole Leo thing, why it's so important at this moment. Long story short, we were just talking about Saturn. It's been in its home sign of Capricorn, all dignified in Capricorn since December, 2017. And so there really hasn't been a major powerhouse energy of dignification since now the sun moving home to Leo. So now that that's happening, and now that we have Saturn in retrograde, this is gonna bring up a lot of crazy stuff because if you look at Saturn, Saturn is actually making aspects to the nodes in a weird aspect, but still, the sun is about to, during this lunar eclipse, be on the nodes, which is on Friday. We got Mercury retrograde coming. So this Leo season is gonna definitely be intense as hell. Like the growth might feel hard, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have to be fun or, or positive. I think that we've gone through a lot of very difficult growth for a long time. I'll be real. I would say that most of this year, the growth has just kind of come with a lot of, how did I make it through that shit? I don't know. And then, you know, whew, 
kind of difficult feeling after that. But now, with the Sun and Leo, it definitely is a courageous. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna force the courage of, of, of a lion more than ever, right? Like, and I know that some people might not want to hear that shit. Like, oh no, I don't know if I can keep putting up with more energy. But the Sun and Leo finds courage in in greatness, in finding that that extra energy inside that lights you up, that gives you extra power. I think it's very difficult for people to you know, get through this Saturn Capricorn without some big jolt here, like the eclipses in Leo and Aquarius. I mean, this is ultra connection. And plus with Mars and retrograde, I mean, you know, this could definitely be a time where, especially in the South Node, it's like these crazy karmic events that you just are having to find extra courage already and strength. The Sun in Leo finds it in a different way. It doesn't find it from kind of stepping up with a you know, a gun or a knife or something and running into battle or running into a fire and saving somebody. It's a very personal inner courage that you must find through your, through finding happiness, through finding your heart, through finding your strength within. And that could be extremely, you know, difficult. And I think it starts, of course, and I, I know it's very cliche, like, oh, you got to love yourself. Well, yeah. And you got to love the situations in front of you. Oh shit, yeah, because there's no other way to kind of be, get into happiness at this place. Like, whatever cards you've been dealt with at this moment are definitely going to be like, I better love that I got a two and a four and a seven and a ten and a jack. It's like, what can I do with that vibe, right? When you get dealt some really weird cards right now, this is where you have to go, I'm gonna play these cards as best as I can. When you play, uh, if you don't know how to play poker, this is definitely poker hand shit, right? So in, in Texas Hold'em, they throw three cards, right? And then you get dealt two cards. And it might look like you have some really bad cards, right? You're like, oh man, I got like a two and a, and a four or something. But there's two cards, right, that come popping out. And especially with all this Aquarius and all this retrograde stuff, your cards that look shitty right now might actually be the best cards that you could have because the next two cards that come out might actually be a two. It might actually create maybe a straight or a, or whatever on the river card on the last card. So this is definitely a time in your life where instead of going, gosh, I just wish things would kind of change. It's more like, no, I'm going to accept this situation. I'm going to accept this part of my life and I am going to step forward into it and I am going to make the change myself. Like, there really is no, uh, nobody there to save the day but yourself. And nobody's going to change the situation for you. That's the whole part of Mars retrograde in Aquarius. Like, with the south node in Aquarius, with all this stuff. Like, the, this big lunar eclipse in Aquarius, opposed to Leo. Like, it's kind of like we're all putting ourselves on some sort of pedestal, expecting other people to fix our lives or other people to make a decision that's going to change our lives or other people that's going to do something that's going to make things better for us. No, you gotta, you gotta fucking find it in yourself and make the change. You can't just keep waiting on some other person, whether it's a, a relationship, a lover, a group of people or something or some outside entity in your life to just somehow come to the rescue. Because guess what? You know who the rescuer of the Zodiac is? A lot of people think it's Aries, which it is, but it's Mars. And guess who else is the helper? Aquarius. And Mars is retrograde in Aquarius with the south node. That means the two energies of help are gone. Gone. There is no help right now, okay? Like, I'm just going to be straight as a fucking arrow to you all. You know, like, there is no zodiac help. Capricorn and Leo realized, I better build a kingdom and take care of it and make it the way it is and have the structure in my life and know how to play the fucking game. This is some intense kind of game playing, you know, in the Zodiac right now. So if you're expecting like somebody to kind of help the situation or some outside part of yourself to change at this moment, it ain't gonna do it. You're gonna have to step in and go, holy shit, I gotta do this on my own, right? Yes. <laughs> She's like, I don't know about that. No, I completely agree. What's your input on it? Well, it's Leo season. You got to be optimistic and you got to get it because the sun doesn't wait for something else to come light up the night sky. The sun has to light it up itself. It doesn't wait for any other planet to do that. The sun's the only planet that does that. 
will start. Yeah, maybe so. I should just start throwing her the the live stream and stop doing it now. Maybe I <laughs> maybe I found someone who could do the job for me. You know what I mean? I'll take it on your sick days. But she's actually right. So right. So the sun, right? Okay, is the Leo energy, and now the sun has returned home. But what does that exactly mean? I mean, one. The sun is a, is a magical luminary energy. It's definitely not like a planet. Like it's not, it's a lot, it's a, it's a, all the planets are alive, but what gives life to the planets is the sun. And what gives life to the sun goes beyond in the middle of the sun, which goes into other dimensions and connects to other stars that is somehow interconnected. That's the Aquarian invisible electricity that connects it all. So there's this invisible force at the moment right now that, is you either step into it and, and, and use it or you hope some other person's going to do it for you and then that's where you feel alone and you feel like things won't change and yeah, crazy situations are going to come up during these eclipses. They're going to be weird situations. But I think a lot of it is how you deal with it in your head, how you stay positive through it because... Leo is positive, Saturn and Capricorn. It's not that it's negative, it's just extremely carbon-based realistic. So being realistic and positive is the key to this, which is actually kind of a weird angle because sometimes we gotta be positive even when the real shit sucks, you know? And that, that's not easy to do. Sometimes it's much more easy to be positive about denying what's real and trying to kind of comfort ourselves and be like, it'll be okay even though you know, that tumor's all over my brain and, you know, like I got to get it cut off or something, right? It's like, there's, there's gnarly shit that has to come down. <laughs> people looking at me crazy? I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. People, people, these, these people, these people definitely don't get me. I don't care. And that's the whole thing about Leo, right? Well, like, they only showed up during the part where he's talking about getting a tumor cut out of his head. And so they were probably like, whoa. But, that, but that's the whole thing about Leo is yeah, you just like, gotta be you. you just gotta, gotta own it and not care. You really have to not care what other people think about how it's going to make your life happy and how you're going to do things. Because I think that's the problem is we keep always looking at Mr. and Mrs. Jones down the street or, or what other everybody, and especially right social media, what everybody else is doing in social media or how they're doing it. Who cares how they're doing it? Exactly. Who cares? Like do it the way that you want to do it, mm -hmm. you know? No, it's yourself. definitely not a tumor. It's just a faux hawk. It's just extremely not done. I didn't do my hair today, I'll be honest. And I didn't take a shower I think today. it looks good. This is like Sunday. I don't give a fucking shit about what's going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, so anyway. And I know. And I'm not... I also don't want to put uh, some sort of negative light out there about cancer and tumors and stuff. I'm not trying to mock it either. But I'm just trying to use it as an example to the realistic shit that we're all dealing with in our life is something that we have to be real about. But we've got to shine that light on that realism instead of trying to deny it or escape from it. Because there's a lot of escapism right now. The reason why I say that is one, we're getting ready for Venus this week to oppose Neptune. So Venus and Virgo is a realist as well. There's a lot of earth energy. And I think with all this earth energy right now, you know, there's a lot of real shit, physical shit we're all having to deal with in life. Health shit situations, all the way down to money situations, and all the way down to, like, is my path really being laid correctly in my life? Well, the Sun in Leo goes, why don't you add your unique, and especially this lunar eclipse in Aquarius and Mars in Aquarius retro, this is where you add your uniqueness to it. So, like, here, I'm in Corona del Mar. Uh, every house is different in Corona del Mar. Like this person likes that kind of house. They, that's kind of more like an East Coast style. That person has the vines. This person made their own little kind of, yeah, I guess it's kind of like a churchy looking castle. I don't know. I would say it's kind of like, Victorian. like Beauty and the Beast after yeah. Beast becomes not a beast that's no exactly more. exactly what it looks like. Right? Kind of, I don't know why I fucking channeled that shit, but like, so, like, everybody has their own way and flavor of, like, how to deal with their life. There is no kind of uh, everyone follow the same code at this moment. Because I think if you start 
I know this is another dumb example, but you know, I'm a car and jet ski guy. So it's like, sure, you might read the manual of how to fix something, but maybe when you get in there, it's a little bit easier to pull that fucking screwdriver and that nut out your way faster than maybe what the manual says. Like, this is where we learn to find our own way of doing things. Somebody said gothic. Yeah, it's kind of like light goth. Yeah. That's the new thing. I don't know if you know, like, dark goth's kind of boring now, you know? Like, we're kind of seeing the same shit. Light goth is kind of like the new thing. (laughs) I don't know. But, you know, Leo season usually is a little bit more... I mean, you can feel it right now. You can feel this positive energy coming in. But it doesn't mean that it's going to erase what's really going down. So, you know, that's the scariest part about it. Is like, don't, don't start thinking Leo season's going to erase all the shit that's really going down. Mars is getting ready to square Uranus with the sun in a T-square in the next two days. Fuck, that's in my solar return. Ooh. I know. I'm not really too excited about that one. Yeah. So there's definitely going to be some shocks and awes in the world and shock and awe and, and things going on right now in life. But whatever it takes for you to do what you got to do to get through it. You know what I mean? It's like for me. I fucking smoke right now. It grounds me through this time. And I don't care what people think. Really, I don't. That's a Leo thing. Like we, you know, the whole world and every commercial and whatever's happened to everyone else, that might happen. But you know what? I might just fucking push the gas a little bit too hard on my vet and fucking fly off. Or maybe some fucking asteroid comes and fucking hits tomorrow and I was smoking and I was fine. I didn't die from smoking. I died from the fucking meteor shower that hit us, you know? You're shocked? I've been smoking for like a while. I used to smoke a lot, actually. To be honest with you, I don't care. I'm real. The part about me and how I do my spirituality is about realness. I don't like try and hide behind some fake persona. You know what I mean? Like, who can Like, how is how is that gonna help me or anybody else? Like, or feeling guilty about certain things? You know, sure. Am I going to smoke my whole life? I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't, I also I don't know. I want to say, so many people, pretty much everybody in this world tries to fit into what society, like, likes. And... That doesn't bring happiness, it, but, ever. But also, everyone thinks that they need to be a certain way because that's the way, the way everybody is, but everybody has flaws. Everybody has this, everybody has that, but everyone thinks that everyone's perfect and needs to try and be perfect, but when the truth is, nobody is perfect. So why not just be you, 24 seven? You know, it'd be kind of like if I wore whitey tidies every day, okay? Like Fruit of the Looms, white fucking underwear, okay? Do you know? No, you wouldn't think it's hot. (laughs) Okay, okay. Let's. And I'm not judging people who do, but there's there's proof out there that (laughs) men's balls, okay, when they get fucking in the whitey tidies and the fruit of the lubes, and they and they and it's weight and it's like the what is it like it's too snug up there, that they actually it messes with their testicular energy and it messes with their ability to flow semen out and... No, it actually makes you infertile because... Oh, infertile, the, I yeah. I actually... Oh, I know this, actually. It's an old... It's an old... No, I don't it, know if it's it, a rumor or a myth, but... It raises the temperature because it's too close to your body, so it raises the temperature, and when they're too warm, you're infertile, so... So, you know, it's What's like... I know that wearing whitey tighties ain't my thing, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And Leo, it's like... The thing, okay, so think about if you were to build a castle right now. Here's, here's what I've taught through all my schools and when I teach people astrology and I teach people about Leo. It's probably the best sign for me to teach since I'm like all Leo in my chart, okay? Like if you were to have a castle, how would you build it? Would you look at other castles or would you build it your own way, right? Like would you do a moat with sharks in it and all that kind of crazy shit? What would you do? How would you build your castle? It's like doing it your own way like castles are all unique the best ones are unique but when you come to like i don't know i live in orange county where it's suburbia right like even though there's a lot of uniqueness here 
it's cool. But there's some parts of Orange County where every house looks the same, right? And after a while, when you drive down the street, you're like, man, I, it's like, I'm in this, it's like, I don't know, is that your house or is that my house? Or whose house is that? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's like, it's like custom cars, right? Like, everybody's driving cars, but like, if you customize it, that's Leo. You customize it in your own way that makes you happy. You know what I mean? It's just, a, it's, a, it's a very rough moment because it's not the outside shit that is the problem. That's the issue, okay? It's not the outside shit happening in your life that's crazy and seems weird and seems uncontrollable. Because part of this is, there was no, this is forcing all of our souls to get out of this control thing, right? That, unfortunately, there is fate in the world. Like, people got to accept fate. It's not even more... How faded is it? The number 23 I'm sitting there. And I didn't even notice that. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I'm number 23. I'm born right on the 23rd. And yeah, 23, right? I didn't even plan. I just noticed that right now. Fate, right? I'm sitting here on fucking 23. You can't control every situation right now. All you can control is how happy you deal with the situations in front of you and how you bring light to it and how you bring some sort of positivity to it because at the end of the day... All this Uranian energy and Mars retrograde and Mercury retrograde coming, like there is no control. So everybody that's been asking me for advice, because I've been getting calls from people being like, hey, I need some advice. I'm like, okay, what's your situation? And it'll be like, I wanna, I have this issue and I wanna do this and I wanna jump to there and I wanna do that. And I'm like, dude, you're just trying to control the situation too much and it's going way out there into fucking, you're like trying to like, Get your gas filled in fucking Pluto. Like, why don't you just go down the street and do it? Well, that's kind of scary or I don't know. I don't know. It's like, dude, just make your life easier right now instead of trying to do these crazy roads. The whole, the whole thing that's going to illuminate this massive, weird eclipse coming up this week is why do you keep trying to take the weirdest roads to get where you want to go? Like, why don't you just do what's the cards that are dealt in front of you and do those hands instead of going, all right, I'm going to fold on this hand and I'm going to jump to the table till I'm happy till I get the cards I want. It's like, you might fucking go all night at the casino and never get the cards that are dealt. So you wasted a whole night. You know what I mean? Like, or, or, you know, I mean, I think it's kind of weird too. Cause it's like relationship stuff is pretty intense in the universe right now. So it's like, Ooh, maybe there's a better situation in a relationship or maybe there's a better situation at my job or maybe there's a better situation and only you know that inside but if you start looking at it for this kind of extreme crazy road to get there I almost guarantee you it's not going to show up you're going to end up where the hills have eyes and fucking Pluto's going to be there ready to eat you in your fucking RV like fucking right mm -hmm. I don't know what do you think I have a big explanation on that What's your explanation? The way how you like go about getting stuff and manifesting things or whatever, or the crazy. Well, things people taking fucking life. crazy roads to get where they want to go. Right. At the moment. So, my way of looking at it is, if you have an idea of where you want to go, it's not up to you to figure out the path. It's like driving a car. You see, like, I'm getting this from from a specific movie. Some of you might know it, but you can see ten feet in front of you. That's all you need to see because I you can drive from from here to Canada and only know 10 feet in front of you at the time. You don't need to know the entire, entire way. You just need to keep following the signs. Oh, this is the best place to go here. Oh, this is the best place to go here because you're not gonna know what roadblocks are gonna be there. You're not gonna know if construction's gonna be on that one road. You can't plan at all. No, we just did a five week tour around America and... You, sometimes you gotta take detours. So you can't like plan the road and be like, no, it has to be this way. I have to go this way. It's like the road's closed. It's gonna be closed for a month. You're not gonna get there for a month. You know, it's like sometimes you got to go with the flow and where you just got to go in the moment. And so it's like doing it in the moment and doing everything you can in the moment where you are right now, not stepping ahead a year from now and trying to take off from there. Yeah, that's a good explanation. Like we planned the whole five week trip around America, right? And when we got to New York, it's like, okay, when you have a fucking 43 foot trailer and you have a huge fucking dually truck, okay? When you come into New York, 
there's bridges and they were built in the 1900s and the 1800s. So they're only like 12 feet. Well, my trailer's 13 feet, six inches high, okay? Even with an app and everything, there was one route to take to get where we needed to go, remember? Mm -hmm. And it was blocked. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was blocked. So the only way for me to get where I needed to go was blocked. Blocked. And so I had to go down fucking streets uh -huh. that said no trucks over four tons when yep. I'm like fucking, I don't know, I'm like 20 or four, 14. No, yeah, we were like 15 tons. Yeah, we were like 15 or 16 tons. Mm -hmm. And I'm going down these crazy streets and sometimes we're like, oh, no, we're going to hit the light pole above us. Yeah, exactly. But, like, sometimes, you know, when it seems crazy. You just got to maneuver. You just got to maneuver through. But you also don't. It's weird because at the same time, yeah, that's a crazy road that the universe throws us. But you still have to. Navigate it. Navigate it and be strong mm -hmm. and not freak out. Even though yes. I freaked the fuck out on people. <laughs> I was honking at people. I was yelling at people. I rolled down my windows. Cause New Yorkers, I know, I love New Yorkers, but you guys, man, when it comes to driving, you guys are not chill at all. Like, you know, like there's not I've much, heard more there's not much, car horns in my there's not life. much chill in New York. You know what I mean? Home. Like here in California, like people get it. They go, Oh, it's a big fucking trailer. That's a truck here. Chill out, dude. Most people are stoned anyway. So like fucking like, Oh, I got, I'll light my fucking, yeah. my weed, dude. And I'll fucking chill out while you fucking go. Yeah. But in New York, people just don't let you. They're like, I need to get here now. Well, the most important thing I think is remaining positive through any sort of situation that life throws at you because you're gonna find yourself in gnarly situations sometimes, but if you remain with a positive attitude, you'll be calm enough to actually think about a solution and happy enough to have the energy to get through the situation. Whereas if you get upset and get crazy, you're gonna drain your energy very fast. You're gonna be stuck there and then you're gonna feel like you can't go anywhere. And, it's and then that's horrible. when you feel alone. Yeah, and then you're gonna be in a horrible situation but the thing is, worrying about it's not going to fix it, so you might as well be happy through it and figure out. Be like, oh, this is a fucking adventure. Look at the positive side. Just find a positive. And now this made me realize what you, and this helped me, is like, so in that situation when the, when the tunnel was blocked and the, the, the streets were blocked to where I could pass, I couldn't ask for help. Like, it, it was like, I couldn't go to some police officer and be like, hey, can you, like, change the road or yeah. block the road or... You know, blah, blah, blah. It was like, no, I have to figure this out on my own. There is no help. Yeah. You can't like, just call like 911. I just like, can't hey, call like some, some person to come out and just be like, pave a way for this guy. You know what exactly. I mean? Like, which of course Leo energy wants, right? So we're all kind of in a weird space where we all just are like expecting, yeah, fucking I'm me and this shouldn't be happening to me in my life and somebody should show up and fix this shit for me. Uh, not going to happen. No. I mean, you get yourself into all your situations. That's what I personally believe is you you put yourself there. Things, of course, yes, get thrown at you. But Jerry Wong's but in here. <laughs> Jerry, we got a Canadian up in here. Two Canadians. Well, yeah, we got two. Well, no, you're American now. Um, well, kind of. Kind, kind of. of. Kind of. But, um, I'm both. Well, it's like racing, you know? Like, sometimes you fucking jump the band like I did. And I can either complain and be pissed at the situation but that's what i dealt with and you know what you just have to take what it is and fucking go with it and mm -hmm. take the place that you get and make the best of it and you know what i made the best of that day sure i didn't get first place that day which of course i was fucking pissed because i got first the, the Every round single other time. <laughs> i got first the lot and i got first that race actually yep. but i jumped the band so technically it's not legal so you know you just get you know with life like right now i think there's going to be a lot of crazy shit and if you just stand back and go the world's not gonna just fix it for me, you know? Yeah, so worrying about it's not yeah gonna fix like it. the world's not gonna just fix this for me. Like I gotta step into it and I'll fix it. And I got this myself, I got this. I, there's all the pieces we need right in front of us right now to fix anything. And I think that's gonna be the big part of this Leo season is with Saturn and Capricorn and, and its dignified energy and with the sun and Leo, there's this kind of, you have to step up to the plate and be a big boy or a big girl and take it on and then of course leo is all about your inner child so of course our little inner childs are like no i don't want to have to step up to the plate <laughs> like and especially being a king or a leo or like a prince or a princess right it's like oh my god like there's sand i don't want to take off my shoes will somebody roll out a red carpet for me on the sand no you got to fucking take off your shoes it's like <laughs> <Carry those shoes. laughs> okay so every situation that's coming right now is going to be like 
sorry, there's no red carpet rolled out for you. You kind of have to do it yourself, you know, or you've got to grow up and be like, I got to bite the bullet here and deal with the situation instead of like, I don't know, expect people to do it for you. Like it ain't going to happen that way. It ain't going to happen that way. Like there's no rescue. You can't, and especially because Saturn rules the government. Like if you really think the government right now is going to fix something for you, Well, the only person a, you can ever rely yeah. on in your entire life is yourself. Well, that's what I think Leo teaches. But yeah. I think at the end of the day, though, Aquarius teaches that, you know, sure, it's people who know themselves who get together, mm-hmm. who know their, 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 their confidence in themselves. And when you get a group of people that know that together and they know their roles, then they can do greatness. Oh, yeah. But when people start relying on other people, right? Or like right now, people are relying on the government to fix things. Like they're relying on either A, Trump to fix it, or B, get rid of Trump to fix it, or C, vote Democrats in or vote Republicans in, and that'll fix the world. It's like, these people are not going to fix the world for your personal shit you're going through in your life right now. Like, sorry. I think that's the biggest thing that's going to show up with all this is like, this has nothing to do about the government. This has nothing to do about the president. This has nothing to do about which president would be better. All this has to do with is the shit in your life and you stepping into it and you not getting all fucking weird and you acting like a little diva. Like, oh my God, I can't deal with this. Oh, if this was different, it would be much better. Well, why wait? Because that's going to be a long time away, whatever that is. Just do it now. Mm-hmm. Build your happiness in your kingdom right now. The best time is always now. I anything. know, it's so fucking cliche, though, you know what I mean? Like, I, Sure, but why do you think it's such a cliche term and why people use it so much? It must be true, right? <laughs> that's true. But I, I, I don't like cliches because I think they're, you know... Okay, we'll change the wording of it. I know. What, what would be the word? Um, I don't know. If you're going to do anything, just do it. Yeah, you just have to kind of deal just with life it. the way it's crumbled and... Or, you know, some people say fucking take lemons and make lemonade. Like, that one's fucking, I know, so cliche. But we should change it to uh, if you've got to pee and there's no restroom, then pee in your fucking bottle that you were just drinking water out of. He did that today. I did that today. There was no bathroom here, and I'm not going to pee on these people's lawns. All I got to say and is I, at least the bottle was big enough and this time. At least, the, yeah, at a 32 ounces. That's the positive part of I it. Was you got to look at the positives. I was good. So instead of when me there freaking wasn't an out, emergency. and instead of me also causing some sort of ruckus and peeing on, especially, I love these people because they got 23 in their fucking uh, address. address. I'm not going to fucking pee on their fucking house. Like, that's pretty fucked up. But I'll take control of the situation. I had a Fiji bottle that was empty. The universe will throw every piece you need right in front of you. If you got to pee and there's no place to pee, guess what? God and the universe gave me a fucking bottle to pee in. You know what I mean? So I was, I was good. You got to believe in yourself. Now, (laughs) when she had to pee, the universe made her bladder big enough to be able to hold it to walk down on the beach to the actual place. I will always hold it instead of peeing in a bottle. Well, see, I'm a diva. I'm a Leo. I will not wait. If I got to pee now and it's like, I can't hold it, I'm peeing. Now. I'm a diva in the opposite way. The bottles? No. Somebody said improvise, <laughs> and I think that's the best part about Leo is really any leader or any, because uh, Leo rules humor, right? So the best humorous people are improv people. Pre planned comedy sucks. Sure, movies can be funny and all that shit, but the best is just on a cuff, on the cuff, coming from your heart, making people laugh. You know what I mean? And so. Yeah, she is classy. I know. You'd think that I'm kind of classy, but really, I'll be honest with you, I'm classy when I need to be classy, but really, at the end of the day, like, I'm a little trashy. I don't know. You're pretty classy. She had to wait till she got but married to me to find out that I'm a little, I'm a little trashy, you know? I, I have, have, I, have ex- I have extreme class when I need it, like any, like any king, right? Any king, before they come out, they get all done up to be classy. Mm -hmm. But when it's fucking not time to shine or be on stage or be the king or the queen and be out there, guess what? We're just normal fucking random people in the world and fucking... Who fart. 
all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I fucking... Super classy. I, I don't care, you know. <laughs> if I have to fart anywhere, I'll fucking fart. But if I'm on stage and I'm talking to somebody, you like... You fart, but you do it quietly. You do it quietly. <laughs> You were going to say you didn't fart at all. And I'm like, no, you can't say that. <laughs> you just lie. let out a little at t like the right times. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know she makes me look real trashy. I'm even trashy wearing a fucking tank top today. No, it's so cute. I don't, you know, I don't really care. You know, she's all done up nice. I'm That's because like, I had to wake up early I'm like, this morning. You know, fuck it. So anyway, that was a good little uh, Leo talk. I'll leave you guys with a little bit of beautiful ocean right there. And I know that you're going to hear from me and from every other fucking astrologer that this is going to be a gnarly time. But I had this interesting channel today that like this could really be a really positive and amazing radical transformational experience in your life that it will blow your mind away forever. Because if, especially if you keep thinking it's going to go bad. I bet you it'll go good. Now, this is where it's kind of a tricky situation. Don't get too confident in it going right at the same time because it could fucking throw you a loop the other way. So usually I'm all about, I do promote positivity, but I think overconfidence right now is silly. Uh -oh. Overconfidence <laughs> is silly at the moment. Um, courage is different than confidence. Courage is just showing up raw and authentic with your heart and going, all right, God, I trust you. And I know that the universe has got the pieces and whatever it is, I'll improvise with the pieces and I'll fucking make it work. The confidence in that opposed to the confidence, like I am the almighty strength of who I am and I will get, and I'll just make it happen my way. Oh man. Yeah, that's, that, that's when, that's when it's all going to fucking. But that's more of like a more of like a fucking bulldozer confidence like that's how i look at it you don't yeah. really want a bulldozer confidence but you want the confidence of you know what shit's just gonna be perfect and it's gonna work out that's, that, what, that's yeah. how i live well, my day-to-day yeah. -day life all the pieces that the universe has are right there and they'll bring it to you if it's not like there. i'm thirsty it right now up on your doorstep and there's a water in my wife's purse see i'm a guy i'm a guy i don't you. fucking carry no purse mm. Mm. And I know how much he needs water. And it's fucking right. from Iceland. Mm -hmm. So every piece that you need is right there. That's the other part of Uranus and Taurus is it's teaching you to be a hoarder in the right way. Like, if there's things you need in your life, fucking get it. Mm -hmm. And it'll all figure itself out. You know what I mean? Like, this is a huge test of not only all the pieces being there, but are you showing up with some of the pieces that you need too? You know, are you building those pieces that you'll need and not being afraid to build them? Because if you're afraid to build them, right? Like I'll use a very personal example real quick. So in December, when Saturn went into Capricorn, but right before when Saturn was at the Galactic Center, I made a huge decision in my life. I was like, I'm gonna build the Leo King Studios and 12th House Media and start this whole entire new fucking thing. I knew, I knew Uranus was coming into Taurus I knew Saturn was coming into Capricorn. I'm like, I gotta build what I want to have, okay? Now all that shit's built, but now there's a huge amount of fear of whether or not I can pull that shit off. Once you get like down the road with something that big, it's like, can I pull this shit off, man? And we all have that big question, can we pull it off? But if you've been building the pieces and trusting that those pieces are there, because if you're trying to build a house and you're expecting the universe to just throw fucking a house down like fucking from the heavens well i was gonna say a little bit like uh you know it's not gonna come from dorothy in fucking kansas and fucking on the yellow brick road fucking you know it ain't gonna happen that way like you gotta go be like okay let me go get some of the wood oh man do i have enough money for the wood i do but how am i gonna get the money to to get the flooring and the windows. To get the flooring. You just kind of have to take one thing at a time and it will build and then the universe will find a way to all make it work instead of freaking out with your manifesting and being like, oh shit, I'm gonna back off right now. You, Uranus and Taurus is not about backing off with your, your money, your value systems, your manifesting, because when you back off, the universe goes, all right, well, you're not going forward. Uranus is a forward moving planet, so it's very tough in Taurus because a lot of us feel, holy shit, I don't know if I can do this. 
I don't know if I have the means. I don't know. You do have it. You have enough means to get to step one, so get to step one. And the universe will find a way to give you the means to go to step two. And then the universe will give you the means to go to step three. But if you're too afraid to go to step one, guess what? You ain't getting to step 29. I guarantee you, 100%. So I'm going to end with that note there. Rowdies. Bye. Peace. Love y'all. It's my birthday tomorrow. Bye.